So, masters, today we're gonna be talking about sound. And uh, sound, though it seems, uh, I mean, nothing technical about it, what's the big deal? There are certain elements that if you keep it in mind, it can really help you in your spiritual journey, in your uh, quest for new information or understanding it better. Meditation is one thing which uh, is easy, very easy, simple. You close your eyes, sit in a comfortable posture, and uh, you are trying to be within you. There are uh, certain aspects that if we understand and if we follow, then we can improve uh, your level or your you know, own satisfaction with your uh, practice. So when we are talking about sound, uh, one thing is we talk or we understand and the elements associated with it. And when we talk about koshas, right, and there are uh, many koshas, because what we are trying to do is you are trying to get into meditation. So when you apply yoga into your everyday life, and when we say yoga, we are not intending to say the full on, all the asanas, different levels, um, but we are talking about the basic because what is yoga? It's a union. So again, you are trying to bring your mind and body together. So what's happening, not just mind and your body, but your breath, your wisdom, your spirit, everything is coming into harmony. When this happens, you are promoting, you are improving your health. And then what we are trying to achieve, which is mindfulness, you're trying to achieve stillness inside you. So it's very important that we understand different levels that the body is trying to work at. Now, body has multiple levels in the sense, you know, we have energy level, we have physical level, and many others, there are seven. Similarly, when we are talking about uh, kosha, we say anume kosha, which is related to food, you have uh, manume kosha. Uh, obviously, uh, thoughts is the most powerful in the sense, most influencing uh, thing in our uh, overall uh, health or situation condition. Praname kosha, um, which is life force. Uh, Vigyanume kosha, uh, Atman. And anandame kosha, which is basically blissfulness. So as you progress, so you see you start with the food, right? Don't end there. You are starting there. That means uh, in uh, terms of when we say six uh, reasons of, of factors of your health, you know, the lifestyle is second, but the first is your thought. So that's why for uh, anume kosha and then manume. That means your man is much higher importance than the food. Doesn't mean food is not important, but in the level of progress if we say and then come your prana so that's why when we are working on this we go in this level um, so once we say okay you know controlling the diet or what you eat what you don't eat how much certainly is good but remember your uh, thoughts are more uh, critical in terms of influence on your overall health and then uh, you progress uh, from your uh, prana, uh, then you get into the atman level, and then you come into the blissfulness. So these are the steps uh, as we move forward. Now, along with this, when we are talking about all this, the energy is flowing. So how does the energy flow? Energy is flowing through nadis. You have ida and pingla. Of course, you have the shamna, but which is in the dead middle, but let's leave it. And uh, we are not talking about, uh, you know, activating uh, that, but just the energy flow. So once you consider this invisible, what you may call nadis or in Chinese, it's called meridians. Uh, and these are invisible energy path, but 36,000 on the left side, 36,000 on the uh, left, so left and right combined is 72,000. These 
left and right balances the body, the balances the energy and they pass through your seven major chakras. Starting from Muldara at the bottom all the way top to your crown or Sarsara chakra. So it is not just a theory. It is practical. It is the way the energy flows, the way the body harmonizes. Now, what is the importance here of Ida and Pingla uh, is that the one side is feminine, the other side is masculine. And that's how your body energies are balanced. So Ida, which is, you can say, related to lunar uh, and then Pingla, which is solar, that means moon and the sun. And uh, you can relate that why it is related to lunar or moon because it's feminine it's uh, the nature is cool whereas pingla which is related to solar uh, the nature is warm so you see you need both it's not a question of which is better but uh, that's how uh, they work and uh, the different sides because our brain has left side or right side yeah? right hemisphere left hemisphere you can put it that way and again, you need a balance. Some people are very introvert, some are extrovert, which is fine. And then you need a balance because any one side, uh, any extreme is uh, never optimum. Uh, you want a good balance. Why? Again, because if one side is influencing more, it's not like entirely, but if it is more on the mental process, the other one on the physical process, you need both. And once you have a good balance between these, then your body stays what you say in a blissful state. It is easy to bring because you are able to manage. Because if you are not able to manage, uh, then of course, you know, we get into the situation where you are struggling either mentally, physically, or it could be psychosomatic. It's a combination of physical, mental, emotional things. And then we have a lot of issues. Now, we were talking about that, okay, they go through the main seven chakras. But if we look at overall, there are 114. Two are outside. So let's say 112. Out of 112, 108 are active. You have 54 on each side. And you have Ida and Pingla. So that means 54 goes towards Ida side and 54 goes towards Pingla side. So you see how all of this are connected. Now, these chakras, what are chakras? Energy centers. What is it? What do we mean by energy centers? This is where a lot of nadis are coming and merging. You know, like uh, if you are flying to different cities, uh, there are certain cities which are major hub. So there are flights coming from different cities and then there is a lot of transit happening. That means if there is no direct flight, they come to a hub and then from there you have more options to go to different places. Similar thing is you can understand with chakras. So a lot of Naris from all around areas, they are coming, merging, and then again they are going and then going to the next one and then again they go and go to the next one. So these are major hubs. Mini chakras, Right, like even your fingertips, these are mini chakras, right? Your elbow. And so there are 54 on left side, 54 on the right side, total 108. Now, how is it connected to sound? If you really see sound, and in sound, when we talk about, we talk about language, uh, Sanskrit has a very important role. And why is it so? Sanskrit has been a source to many different languages. Even in German language, you have a lot of words from Sanskrit or a lot of contribution, you can say, from these uh, different languages coming from Sanskrit. Sanskrit has 54 sounds, 54 feminine, 54 masculine. So feminine, masculine, you add together, 108. So when we are talking about you know, any old scriptural literature and all, 
and uh, mostly they are written in Sanskrit. And we are not talking about 50, 100 years. We are going thousands of years old. And Sanskrit has been sourced for like in the in other languages also. The beauty of Sanskrit is it is so simple, so perfect, effective that, you know, once you learn the grammar and all, and it's easy to use. Now, you may have seen different people in different society, not just in Indian culture. You know, people use beads, you know, that uh, japmala or whatever you may call it. It has 108 beads. And sometimes people are chanting and, you know, they're using those beads along with it. Why is it so? Because when you talk of sound, every sound has frequency. Frequency means wavelength or energy. It doesn't matter which way we take it. So sound has a unique frequency. Every different sound will have a unique frequency. Frequency has energy associated with it. When you are talking about different kind of shloka, different words, different alphabets, they are creating different sound. That means they have different energy associated with it. And when you talk about classical music, they have very effective, very unique way that every word, every shlokas are put together. It is not just any random words because it sounds cool or whatever uh, they have been put together, but together they bring a frequency. So frequency, the impact or the way you feel may be different if the same shloka is pronounced by a different person. But principally, the energy behind that shloka is still same, or you can say it will be, you know, even if you say a little energy bend, it will be within that band. It's not like one person is going extreme left and the other side of the spectrum. A uh, little variation may come with the pronunciation, but you will get that benefit. So when we see people chanting something, they are activating different mini chakras with those sounds. Why? Because every sound has energy. As we have uh, seen that how Ida Pingla or feminine masculine or left or right side, we have different mini chakras and the frequency of these Sanskrit words and every one of them is unique. That means they are impacting one or the other. Now, we don't have to get into details. Oh, this one is impacting this particular one or this one is that. Uh, we don't need to do that, but we need to understand this. That is why sometimes you may have observed that, you know, there's no harm, nothing wrong listening to or enjoying uh, some, you know, what we call the Bollywood music or whatever, the filmy music, it's all good. You know, you feel, you enjoy the tune and all, but when you listen to classical, it's a totally different level. Because in classical music or those shlokas or those literature, when you're reading it, it is really impacting at your energy centers, different energy centers, which are minor or major chakras. And that's how we impact. Now, our senses, right? By stimulating our senses, because our senses is kind of the connection to the universe. You can really rewire your brain. Now, your senses, as we said, it's your connection to the universe means it's not just the food. Is the sense is also feeding the energy, feeding that whole connection. So your brain, your body is getting different messages, different uh, feelings, sensation, emotions uh, because of your senses. And you can stimulate them in many different ways. So we say, okay, we were talking about Annamaya Kosha, that how you should be mindful of eating healthy diet. For sure. 
at the same time we should be mindful of our different senses because it's not just what you're eating all the information all the activation that you are doing different feelings and emotions through your senses that's also the energy you are intaking now health means coherence coherence means different organ different systems mind heart brain or whichever way we put together working together means in the same direction if you do not have coherence that means if you have imbalance between these three different elements so the brain says go left, heart says go right. Your immune system is in one direction, but your digestive system in the other. Any disagreement, any incoherence between these means it is taking you away from your optimum. That means away from your healthy situation. Now, if we are mindful, we can create higher frequency, higher level, and we can establish the balance. Not only we establish the balance, but as we increase the vibration, that means we are improving our consciousness. <coughs> so, so, we are actively engaging day-to-day -day basis without putting any extra kind of attention or effort now, every day you are listening or uh, you are, you know, using different senses for different, uh, you know, part of the uh, energy or the information that is coming to your body without knowing it. It happens automatically. So you don't have to worry. That means sometimes we lose that fact from our thought process. And then we don't know what's happening because you are not mindful of that. So... Do we need to focus on a particular sense that, okay, this one is more important than the other? Not really. However, we should understand the impact. And today, as we are talking about sound, we'll be talking about ear. Why this sound is such an important factor? Why we are talking about ear? All sensors, all senses, uh, you know, the major five and the different ways the body is interacting, everything is important. However, if we have to understand, we must really understand so that then we can be mindful of things uh, is our ear. Why? Because this organ is very effective in rewiring our brain. What we say the neural pathway means, uh, you know, the different neurons, they come and, you know, work together. And when they fire together, uh, they wire together, they fire together. And then that means it is, Becoming part of us means our habits. When neurons come together, they're making a circuit and that's what your, what we call our habits. Otherwise, you know, you have to think of doing something. But once it's your habit, you do it automatically without thinking. What we say, it's our second nature. Why? Neurons, the network is already built up. Now, you can use this to your benefit in, you know, becoming more and more um, you can say looking inward and good in meditation, good in your uh, self, you know, health management and everything. But this is the organ. This is the first sensory organ. You know, when a baby is developing in mother's womb, this is the first one to develop. Why is it so? You know, there must be a reason. Remember, you sleep every night. Your eyes are getting rested, not your ears. Your ears are still working. It influences us at so many levels. And you know, the ears has three times more nerve connection than your eye. And it is connected to your organs in your body. So what's happening here? You have more nerve connection. Why? If it is not that important, why the nature has given more nerve connection to your ears? Why it is connected to different organs? Think about it. Say you are in your 
friends and family, possibly in your office with your colleagues. And if you hear somebody saying something and you have a doubt that the person is talking about me and if they're laughing, automatically you will see your heartbeat changing, your, you know, immediately your the mood may swing, instant reaction, right? Because you start thinking. If you think it is a positive thing, people are praising you, you go in one direction. If you think they are, you know, talking bad about you, that goes about the other direction. Now, what you think and all, of course, it is uh, what you, it has many different uh, factors which impacts, but the sound, lightning, thunder, any kind of sudden sound. Again, depending on your nature and all, it can really bring you in a state of shock, state of scariness, fear, or it can bring blissfulness, peace, or your mood can swing on a positive side when you hear some music which is really close to your heart or what you like. Some people don't like noisy places, some people like quiet, or some people don't like quietness, they like, you know, be with the people and all. So it doesn't matter which way, but it has a very instant reaction to your mood, to your overall, uh, you can say your physical and mental both, because it will impact your mental and then it will impact your physical health. So your ears are never put to sleep, they're always active. Uh, you can hear what you cannot see. I'm See, one example is lightning. That's a different story. That's a speed of light versus speed of sound. That's a different thing, right? That you see first and hear later. But say wind. You can hear wind even if you cannot see it. There is spectrum that what frequencies we can hear. There are some animals, they can hear different frequencies and all. So nature has given different capabilities to different people. But if we talk about the shape of the ear, it's like inverted fetus in the womb. Now, why is it so? Again, these are not coincidences. This is the nature's design. Now, baby can hear mother's voice. That means before even the baby is born, baby is hearing. This is the first sensory organ which is developing, as we have mentioned before. So, this is another reason we say the babies, the habits are forming inside the womb. And we say, uh, you know, when the mother, uh, expected mother is, um, you know, in different scenarios, different situations, and we say, hey, you are expecting, uh, don't watch certain movies or don't watch certain, uh, you know, uh, things which is, you know, fights or a lot of noise or all kind of negative words and something that can impact your baby. We say, okay, you should be going to a lot of satsang or listening to some chanting and, um, you know, good stuff so that the baby's habits, whatever is forming, they are good, positive. Why? Because we think right now baby is not born, so how can we influence? But actually, the baby is getting influenced. The vibration, sound, energy is going to the baby. That means when the baby is born, it's already too late. That means a part of the habits, part of the energy has already influenced the development of the baby in the womb. And that is the key thing here. When we say, oh, people come to spirituality when they are, say, you know, later part of their life, say 50, 60 retirement, <coughs> So imagine if people understand this even before becoming parent, how much difference we can bring in our next generation's life. Why? Because the influence on the newborn baby, which we are not aware of, we can take care of. 
we can create better harmony in that baby. Good energy means, again, we were talking about Ida Pingla, we were talking about brain, heart, coherence, all the other system coherence, we can bring it. Imagine there is a lot of disagreement between, say, parents or people in the household or in your colleagues. And the baby is listening, baby getting that energy. So if you have a lot of negativity around you, argument and all those noises, yelling, at least we can agree that it won't be a positive influence on the child. We are giving all those negative energy to the child. And because this is the first sensory organ, you can imagine that this is going at the very early stage of the baby and throughout afterwards the development of the baby. Any imbalance means you are going towards some disease or health condition. Doesn't matter is mental, emotional, physical, which way. And then we say, oh, these days newborn babies are having so much issues and this kind of problem, that kind of problem. Just correlate it with what's happening in the society. How much unrest, how much everybody is trying to run, run, run. Everybody wants everything. And then a lot of disagreement, a lot of noise, yelling and whatnot. So this is extremely important. So we say we are, you know, developed uh, uh, and uh, highly skilled and all that. But look at the animals. They not only use sound for communication, but they use it to release tension within the body as well. So we can be very mindful at least what we are exposing ourselves, with kind of sound we are exposing to. Music therapy is a great way to balance or to revive from any stressful situation. You can rewire your brain. You can influence your feelings, your emotions, different hormones that you are releasing because of all this. Everything can be influenced if you are mindful of what you are exposing yourself to. So remember, we have to Always. This is not when you are in meditative state, you take care of it and afterwards you get back to normal. So what should the means is the sound and purity. That's what it is all about. And if we can take care of that, whatever we speak, first of all, speak something that is positive, something that is good and you have a good intention. If you want to chant mantras, I'm not saying you have to. You may be listening to some good classical music, anything that resonates with you. Don't use, you know, the foolish words, negative and all kind of yelling and all, does not help you. There should be a time in the day when you should be observing silence. And silence does not only, it does, but not only it means you are sitting in a room where, you know, it's just silence and all, but silence within. And that's where again meditation comes into or being the moment when we say. There's no point internal chattering is going on and you say, I'm in a silent room. Good, but not good enough. Value of silence is tremendous. Because when you are observing silence, you are looking inward. Now, looking does not mean looking with your eyes. Looking means from your soul, from your Atman level. This is the key. Because when we look inside, that's when you are really understanding who you are. Otherwise, we can advise everybody in the world. It's easy, free. You don't need any education for that. You know, It's so easy to comment on others. Sometimes we don't even understand our own habits, our own feelings. Because we are blocking or storing them or just not exposing them. So what happens is when you do not know yourself fully, you are suppressing those emotions inside you. The more we suppress, the more problematic they become for us. But when you bring silence in your life, it brings peace and harmony. And now you know very clearly what's hidden inside. 
And anything hidden, once known, that is the first step of fixing the problem. Now, all of a sudden, that emotion will be dissolved slowly and slowly. So whichever organ it is gone and it's stuck and troubling you, this is the first step of acceptance that it will start diluting that. So, we were talking about sound, the frequencies. So, every sound has energy. The higher the frequency, the better for us. So, what you should be taking care of? Your thoughts. Again, because of the thoughts, you will say something and in every word you say, there is a frequency means energy attached. People around you. You cannot say that, okay, in my company, I don't like five people. I will change my company. Next company, again, uh, workplace, you will have some people you like, you don't like. You have some people in your uh, family you like, you don't like. All you can do is control your exposure to those people. What you discuss or avoid with certain people is in your hand. So don't think that I will totally run away from the in this world. No. Manage how much interaction, what kind of interaction, what kind of topics. If they are discussing, okay, you can be in silent mode. You can be contributing, but not too much or not listening or paying attention to those negative things they are talking about. Switch to music. Music, that's something you like. If it is classical, even better. Again, does not mean you go and start, you know, japa tapa or mantras and all. No, you don't have to. But if any time you are in a uh, place, whether there is some religious ceremony taking place, there may be some, you know, chanting or something going on. Now, at least you will know that if you are already there, why not take that positive energy? Be mindful of that rather than just, you know, wasting time and negative talking with people around you. Pay attention to those positive sounds, positive energy. Every day, if you are just watching news, which is full of negativity, scaredness, and all those things, all that negative energy is going in you. So it doesn't matter at work, at around you, neighbors, avoid. Avoid all those negative sound that is going inside you. Based on your thoughts, as we said, choose the words properly. If it is not helping, you know, why sit in just criticizing and all those kind of negative. Moments? And then be full of gratitude. This way you will be helping not only yourself, but people around you. You will feel positivity. That yes, whatever you have, there are a lot of positive things. Otherwise, if you are focused on negative, you are always, always into the negativity. Negativity means negative energy. Low frequency, low frequency means you are lowering your consciousness. Whereas if you pay attention to what you are speaking, what you are hearing and all kinds of things related to sound, this is one factor which will help you in improving the energy means improving your consciousness level. So masters, sound is not just uh, one of the input that we get from our uh, you know, sensory organ, but it is really an important factor. There's a reason why it is developed first. And if we pay attention to this, not only we can help ourselves, but we can also help the next generation.